All right, in this video, I wanted to make a drawing that I would often make in the classroom to demonstrate the effect of different environments on the cell because of osmosis. The environments we'll talk about are the hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic environments. So let's jump into this drawing. So the first thing I would like to start with is just a cell. So we're going to have a circular cell here. Inside the cell, we'll have the cytoplasm. Um, and one detail I like to point out about the cytoplasm and the interior of uh, cells is that they're all pretty much the same. There's some deviations, but they're all pretty much the same. In essence, the inside of a cell is about 0.9% salt. All right. So of course the cytoplasm isn't only salt, but the cytoplasm behaves just like a, a solution that has about 1% salt, 0.9% uh, salt. And so if we think about that, if the cytoplasm is about 0.9% salt, we could ask, well, what's the rest? And of course, again, the cytoplasm is a very complex fluid, but we could generalize and say, well, the cytoplasm must be 99.1% water. Right? So we can make this generalization about cells and their contents. This will help us simplify our thought process related to osmosis. So I want to divide this cell up into sort of three quadrants. So I'm going to use these dashed lines to divide my cell into three slices. And now we can use this one cell to think about how cells will be affected in different environments. And we'll start with a hypertonic environment. We'll then think about an ice or sorry a hypo tonic environment and we'll end thinking about an iso tonic environment right. so just from these pieces of terminology we should know a little bit about the salt concentration of these environments so a hypertonic environment Hyper means higher or more. Tonic refers to the um, solutes in the solution. In this case, we're simplifying and just thinking about salt. So a hypertonic environment has more salt compared to another environment. Here, we are comparing to the cytoplasm. So we know the cytoplasm has 0.9% salt. A hypertonic environment has more salt than that. I'm going to use an example of 3% salt. The reason I'm going to use 3% salt is that many or a huge environment on Earth has about 3% salt. So this is equivalent to what the ocean is like. So lots of organisms uh, live in the oceans, lots of microbes live in the ocean. So many, many cells are exposed to hypertonic environments, 3% salt. Again, if we know that the ocean is 3% salt, well, what's the rest? Pretty much the rest is water. So it's about 97% water. I like to think of solutions in this way because it allows me to make a simple comparison between the environment, 97% water, and the cytoplasm, 99% water. I can quite simply ask myself, where is the concentration of water greater? In this instance, it's greater inside the cell. Water will behave just like any other molecule. It will undergo diffusion, and it will move from an area of higher concentration towards an area of lower concentration. Water can move directly across the cell membrane so when a cell like this one is in a hypertonic environment, water will naturally move from where there's more water to where there's less water. 
So to represent that, I'm just going to draw a blue arrow indicating that water is going to move out of a cell in a hypertonic environment. This will cause the volume inside the cell to decrease. And this cell, over time, will undergo crenation or Another term you might hear is plasmolysis. And that just means that the cell is going to shrink. And it'll shrink and move, pull away from its cell wall. All right, so that's what happens in a hypertonic environment. Let's think about a hypotonic environment. So for a hypotonic environment, again, hypo means lower. Tonic refers to the solutes. In this case, we're focusing on salt. So this environment, hypotonic, must have a lower salt concentration than the cytoplasm. So I'm just going to say, well, let's imagine a 0% salt environment. Again, if this environment has no salt, what's the rest? For us, we're going to quite simply say, well, it's 100% water. All right. So again, I like thinking about the concentration of water so that I can quite simply compare the cytoplasm and the environment here, 100% in the environment, 99% in the cytoplasm. Water will always move from where there is a higher concentration to where there is a lower concentration. So in this case, the water will move into the cell. This puts the cell at risk because the water is going to constantly sort of pump up the cell. This cell is going to swell or increase in volume and maybe this cell will undergo lysis. If we add too much water to this cell, it could pop. That would kill the cell. The cell would die. That's a bad situation for the cell. All right, so now let's think about this isotonic environment. So iso essentially means equal. So an isotonic equal salt environment is gonna have the same salt as what we're comparing to. So an isotonic environment will have about 0.9% salt also. Again, that means that this isotonic environment has basically 99.1% water. So here, the concentrations of water inside the cell and outside the cell are equal. And so we might be tempted to say, well, water is not going to move across the membrane. And that would be an oversimplification. What we should recognize is that in an environment like this, some water will move into the cell, some water will move out of the cell, but the amount is equal. So the volume of the cell does not change. So there's no change to the um, shape or size of the cell. So we should actually add that kind of information to our other drawings. So in a hypertonic environment, we said water was going to move out of the cell. Well, some water also moves into the cell, just a lot less. And that's again why over time, a cell in a hypertonic environment will shrink or crenate or undergo plasmolysis. We should add the same information over here. In a hypotonic environment, lots of water moves into the cell. A little water moves out of the cell. That's why over time the cell will swell and potentially undergo lysis. So for bacteria, um, these environments are all pretty common. Again, the ocean, um, fresh water, and then any bacteria in our body are going to experience pretty much isotonic conditions. Um, but how do these cells protect themselves from lysis? So remember that bacterial cells are surrounded by a cell wall. Okay. 
So we're going to label that as our cell wall. Plant cells are also surrounded by a cell wall. And that cell wall for bacterial cells or plant cells is its number one purpose is to protect the cell when it is in a hypotonic environment. The cell wall needs to protect the cell because water is constantly flowing in, causing the cell to swell and potentially undergo lysis. We do not want our cell to pop, and this cell wall protects the cell from popping. The cell wall limits the volume that the cell can increase to, and it makes it so that the cell membrane cannot tear apart. The cell cannot be get large enough to destroy the cell membrane. So in a hypotonic environment, cells rely on their cell wall to protect them from lysis. In an isotonic environment, well, there's no protection required, but the cell wall is still there. And then in a hypertonic environment, again, the cell wall is there, but the cell wall cannot protect the cell from creation or plasmolysis. Again, that's when the cell membrane pulls away from the cell wall because the cell is shrinking due to the loss of water to the environment. So what could protect a cell from crenation or plasmolysis? I think the bigger problem is this overall loss of water, right? We know that inside the cell, we need to maintain homeostasis, which means we need to maintain about 0.9% salt and about 99.1% water. But if we're constantly losing water to the environment, well, what is the cell to do? And so here, I would just quite simply add that many, many cells are going to have pump proteins, specifically water pump proteins embedded in their cell membrane. And those water pump proteins will allow the cell to use energy to pump water back into the cell, replacing the water that is lost due to osmosis. That will allow a cell that normally lives in an isotonic environment or a hypotonic environment to survive periods of exposure to a hypertonic environment. Again, if I'm a bacteria that lives in a river, perhaps that river could dump me into the ocean at the end. And um, in hopes of surviving, the ocean is going to begin drawing the water out of my cell. In hopes of surviving, I'll just spend energy pumping water back in so that I can survive. So that's the idea of osmosis and how water flows in and out of cells due to the amount of salt around the cell. I'll just remind you at the end of this video that the salt cannot cross in and out of the cell because the salt cannot cross the membrane. So if salt tries to get in or out of the cell, it's repelled by the membrane. Water can cross the membrane. Salt cannot cross the membrane. So I hope, I hope that helps put this process of osmosis and the tonicity of the environment surrounding a cell in perspective. As always, if you have any questions, I hope you'll let me know. And I'll look forward to talking to you more on the course discussion boards.